This year we grew about 800 acres of winter wheat. We probably grew a little bit more this year. Grain grower Evan Miles is a partner in his family operation, Blue Stem Farms. We till about 3,000 acres total. Today, it's harvest time. And while most harvests happen in the fall, this crop gets cut in summer. This is what they call a soft red winter wheat. It would be used primarily for confectionery cakes, cookies, crackers, and then so it's got like low protein, low gluten. So it's, it's primarily used for those type of items. It's planted in September, October timeframe, usually around October, and then harvested late June, early July. Winter wheat acts as a ground cover, which helps protect nearby water sources. Every bit of the plant is harvested, the seed head for wheat, and the stem is raked, baled, and sold as straw for animal bedding. But timing the harvest is everything. Right here is your moisture, which is right on target about where we want it. 13-1, 12-9, it continuously changes as we're going across the field. And if you've been around wheat as much as Evan has, it'll tell you when it's ready. You can easily tell that this is ready just because of the color and see how it's like really kind of dry and, and the straw is yellow, amber color. So, I mean, there are several different farmer tricks, that, you know, that I've done over the years. I've learned, you know, you can do stuff like this, you know, and see how it all pops out there easily. And then, you know, a lot of farmers, what they do is they'll just take a couple of kernels and just, you know, pop them in and chew them. And a lot of times if they're real chewy, it's probably too wet and not ready. But if they kind of crack and are real hard, probably ready to go. So it's just a quick farmer trick. Evan knows his way around a farm and likely would have never left these fields he calls home if it weren't for a tragic event that changed the life course for so many young men and women. I ended up going to college for a year after I got out of high school. I graduated in 2001, in June of 2001. September 11th happened, and then I just kind of had like a sense of, of urgency to, to help my country and, and kind of support the troops. And so I said, why not join up and and go ahead in. So I, I joined in July of 2002 and then ended up actually shipping out in January 2003. Evan joined the Navy and was soon patrolling the Persian Gulf on a Marine transport vessel during Operation Iraqi Freedom and Operation Enduring Freedom. I love supporting the country and I love supporting my fellow Americans. And there's such a camaraderie with my fellow service members when I was in the Navy, but it's the same camaraderie in farming and agriculture. Come on. That camaraderie Evan speaks of is a familiar feeling for many veteran farmers. We own and operate Good Run Farm. It's a 100% grass-fed beef cattle operation on leased and owned ground. Rob Burnett is an Army vet and a smallholder cattle farmer from Union Bridge, Maryland. Primary breed is Red Devons. We also have some Devon Cross. So it's a heritage breed, small frame animal that does well on grass. I come from a military family. I have generations before, every generation before me served in, in the military. So it was something that I'd always wanted to do. I spent about five years as a watercraft operator in the army and transitioned over into intelligence and then got out of the Army in 2014, I believe. Did about 12 years. Like Evan, Rob sees military life analogous to farm life. When you talk to people who have served, it is very much a part of them. It shapes who they are. And the same thing in agriculture. You know, farmers, it is very much who they are and their identity. So there is a lot of similarities between farming and, and the veteran community. Rob is a first-generation farmer, so he faced a lot of the struggles many veterans face who've decided to follow their dreams in agriculture. He turned to Farmer Veteran Coalition. 
Their mission is to mobilize veterans to feed America. And they're doing that through helping veterans that are interested in agriculture. Now he's heading up the Maryland chapter. It was a good opportunity for me to give back because people had helped us along the way. And so that's one thing that's very important for us is to be able to pay it forward. It takes a certain selflessness to join the military to serve your country, just as it is for those who serve to grow our food. It's basically a mission. I mean, when you join the service, you go on these missions and you, and you go to support the country and support what we fight for and support freedom and then support other countries as well. Growing food for fellow Americans is just a important mission. And for that, we thank them. Thanks for watching Maryland Farm and Harvest. We hope you liked the video. Make sure to subscribe so you won't miss out on future videos. To learn more about our show and watch full episodes, check out mpt.org farm or just click the link in the description.